The Amos and Andy Show. And now, our stars, Amos and Andy. Well, after waiting two years for the second payment on the Kingfish's personal desk at the Lodge Hall, the finance company gave up hope and took back the desk. That's why we now find the Kingfish in a second-hand furniture store about to buy a desk he can afford. At the moment, he's being convinced by the salesman that a rickety old desk he's looking at is a genuine antique. Now, look here, Mr. Miller. I ain't complaining because the desk is all bruised up and ready to fall apart, but... Ain't you got none without them little holes in it? Oh, those little holes. Well, those are wormholes. That proves it's a genuine antique. Uh, is a genuine antique because it got wormholes? Well, naturally. Of course, there are imitation antiques with man-made wormholes, but uh, those are less expensive. Less expensive? You mean the, the men's work cheaper than the worm? <laughs> no, uh, what I meant to say was the wormholes stamp this as being an authentic antique. As a matter of fact, this desk actually belonged to, uh, to uh, George Washington. Oh, George Washington, huh? Yeah, this must be the one he throwed across the Potomac. Uh, you want $6 for the thing, huh? Stevens, how can you quibble about $6? Remember, this is the desk that the father of our country actually wrote letters on. Yeah, from the looks of the thing, I guess he rid him with his little hatchet there, too, didn't he? Uh, tell you what, Miss Muller, I'll take it. Uh, I'll give you $4 now, and you send the desk over to my office at the large hall... And I'll raise the other $2 before 6 o'clock. All right, Stevens. It's a deal. Amos, I can't tell you how sweet it was of you to come over and bring us this anniversary present. Oh, that's all right, Sapphire. You and the Kingfish is two of our closest friends, uh... Uh, tell me, what did the kingfish give you for your anniversary? I wish you hadn't asked me that, Amos. George walked out of the house this morning, and he not only didn't give me a remembrance, he didn't even mention our anniversary. I feel terrible. Well, now look, Sapphire, maybe he did that on purpose, you know, so he could kind of surprise you tonight with a present. <laughs> no, Amos, he just forgot about it. It's because it don't mean nothing to him no more. <laughs> Amos, the love is went out of our marriage. Oh, don't say that, Sapphire. The kingfish still loves you. I know he does. Well, not like he used to, Amos. I just took out some old love letters that he wrote me 20 years ago, just before our marriage. Here, read this one. It's short, but it certainly is beautiful. It come with some flowers. To the most wonderful woman who ever drew the breath of life, I love you with all my heart, joy. Yes, yeah, Sapphire, that's really beautiful, all right. Yes, ain't it? I was looking over these other four letters, too. They're all just the same, sweet and affectionate. Oh, Amos, why can't George be sweet like that again? Yeah, well, what we got to do is kind of remind him, uh, say, wait a minute, I got an idea. I tell you what I'll do, Sapphire. I'll take these five letters, and I'll slip them into Kingfish's desk at the office, and when he find them, it's going to remind him of the way he used to feel about you, see? Sapphire, I know this is going to work. Well, look at that, Anna. They must have delivered my new desk while we was out to lunch. Oh, uh, that's a new desk? Yeah. Well, if that was a new desk when you bought it, we must have took longer to eat lunch than we thunk. Look at all them holes. Look at them holes in there. What is them? Oh, them is wormholes, Andy. Yeah, that proves the thing was owned by George Washington. Yeah, there used to be worms in that desk. Yeah, that's a fine thing for a fellow to keep in the desk. Boy, this thing show is busted down. Look at this drawer here. Mm -hmm. uh, what are these papers doing in here? They look like old letters. Yeah, let me see them there, Andy. Yeah, five of them. Yeah, one say to the most wonderful woman who ever drew the breath of life, I love you with all my heart. Signed, George. <coughs> say, Andy, this letter signed George. Signed George, huh? Well, what about it? George is the common name. Even you has got it. Say, Andy, don't you understand? This desk belonged to George Washington. And if these letters are signed George, then these letters must have been written by the father of our country. <laughs> yeah. 
to the mama of our country. Yeah. Oh, say, Andy, this is the greatest thing that ever done happened to me. Yeah, it's good, all right, but uh, I listen, don't... Listen, Andy, don't you understand that these are George Washington's letters? They are worth a fortune. Oh, people collect this kind of stuff, and they pay anything for them, maybe even $10,000. $10,000. Well, this has certainly been our lucky day, ain't it, partner dear? Yeah, well, I... Uh, <laughs> say, Andy, uh, there was a word you done used there that kind of grated up against me there, you know it? <laughs> the word partner. Now, that word only is used when there's two or more peoples in a deal, and there's just one people in this deal, and I is both of them. That's what it is. Now, just a second, King. Now, just a second, nothing. Them letters is mine. That's my desk. Picked it out myself, and I bought it with my own money. Yeah, that's right. You put up the capital, and I has done put up the labor. What labor? I was the one that opened the drawer. <laughs> nothing doing, Andy. No partners. But Kingfish, I as your friend. But I tell you, I ain't taking no partner in, in this deal. But we has been partners in dozens of deals. Sorry, son, the answer is definitely no. I'll give you $12. Here's your receipt. <laughs> now, look here. Now I can pay the rest that I owe on the desk with this money of yours. Yeah, well, here's your money. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Uh, Lightning's out in the hall there. Call him there, will you, Andy? Okay. Hey, Lightning. Uh, you want me, Miss Andy? Yeah, you ain't busy, is you? Well, I just been sweeping up the hall again. Yeah, well, the kingfish want to see you in here. Uh, uh, Brother Kingfish, I ain't got much time. Uh, what I got to do is go to my memory course at night school. Well, I don't care nothing about that, Lightning. Now, look, Lightning, this is reporting. I want you to take this $2 over to Miller's Secondhand Furniture Store and pay it to him for me. Now, whatever you do, Lightning, get this in your head. Yeah, sir. I want you to get a receipt. Uh, okay, Kingfish. Yeah, that's right. That receipt is reporting, Lightning. You see, we done kind of struck it big here. We got some letters that George Washington done writ. Uh, did you say George Washington done writ them? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Lightning. He wrote them over a hundred years ago down in Virginia, and today just, just come into our hands. Uh, the mail show sure is slow, ain't it? <laughs> Listen, listen, Lightning, they didn't come in the mail. Ah, uh, you say they didn't come by the mail? No, no, we done found them in this genuine George Washington desk that the Kingfish bought at Miller's. These letters might be worth $10,000. Yeah, and that's why you pay us, when you pay us the money now, give the man $2, you gotta be sure and get a receipt proving that the desk is mine. Now get going. Okay, brother Kingfish, I'll whiz over there. <laughs> All right now, Kingfish, uh, where do we take these letters and get the money for them? Well, now, look here. I, I was just thinking here, and I, I've been thinking of uh, something that hit me in the head here, right? Smacking my brain. Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear now, it. look here. Uh, we might uh, take them down to the, to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., you know, District of Columbia. Right. Take them right down there because they collect all that historic stuff. Yeah, but do you think they're going to be crazy enough to pay $10,000 for five old letters? Oh, sure. They ain't so smart about the things they buy. Damn. Oh, they buy his old broken down spinning wheel. Yeah, they even bought the first plane the Wright brothers ever built. And that was a bad thing to buy. Was, huh? Yeah, since they bought it, ain't nobody down there ever see them fly it. I don't know what they want with the thing. Uh, well, then that might be the... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, good morning, boys. Good morning. Glad to see you. Yeah, come in, Gabby. Yeah, come how on. is you, Gabby? I just met Lightning. Just met him out in the hall. He told me all about the Washington letters, all about them letters. Valuable property. Yes, indeed, valuable property. Let me see a couple of them. Uh, valuable property, huh? Uh, 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 here you is, Gabby. Look at them. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 He sure was crazy about Martha, wasn't he? <laughs> Oh, yeah, he was fixing it all right. These are old letters, all right. Must have been written with a quill. A quill? Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, that's where they, they used to do it in the old days. They used to write with the tail feathers of a chicken. They did, huh? Didn't the chicken get in the way? <laughs> oh, Andy. They plucked out the feathers first. Oh, they pulled the... Oh, I now, see. Now, now, look here, Gabby. Uh, me and Andy is figuring on getting $10,000 for these letters. $10,000? Oh, goodness, that's a lot of money. Yes, indeed, a lot of money. Yeah, and when we gets it, we each going to take our share and put it right smack in the bank, too. Is that what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to do with $10,000? In financial circles, that's what they call sinking fund. Sinking fund? How you figure? Well, if you start sinking that money in the bank, you ain't going to have much fun. That's sinking fund if I've had it. <laughs> 
Now, now look here, Gabby. Uh, you might be able to help us on selling these letters. Now, we were thinking that we might take them down to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. Now, what do you think? Bad. Very bad, Kingfish. You don't stand a chance there. No, indeed, not a chance. What you ought to do is take him to this fellow, Professor Pepperdine, I don't read about. Professor Pepperdine. He's a famous collector of everything of the colonial period. I can get his address for you. Uh, Professor Pepperdine. Yeah, well, now, that sounds uh, like a good idea. I'll go down there to see him. Yeah, Kingfish, do that. Uh, well, Gabby, I guess this whole thing make me and the Kingfish about the smartest men's in Harlem, don't it? Uh, Andy, I'd rather not answer that if you don't mind. Uh, why not? I was like George Washington. I can't tell a lie neither. <laughs> Well, there's the two dollars for the desk, Miss Miller. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thanks, sir. And here's uh, Stevens' receipt. Oh, uh, say, before you go, uh, would you mind telling me about those George Washington letters again? Yeah, well, all I know is that the Kingfish found them letters in the desk he done bought from you, and they they worth uh, ten thousand dollars. Yes, well, that's fine. Yes, thanks. Uh, yeah, sir. Goodbye. Hmm. Oh, that broken-down piece of junk really was a George Washington desk. <laughs> well, I'm going over and buy that back from Stevens before this day's over. Come in, Amos, come in. Well, hi there, Andy. Say, uh, where's the kingfish? Oh, he's gone down to see a fellow by the name of Professor Pepperdine. He's going to sell him something. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you dropped in, though, Amos. Uh, I got big news to tell you. Me and the kingfish done discovered something. Oh, uh, wait gonna... a minute. Oh, that kingfish, Andy, he makes me mad. Somebody ought to give him a good talking to you, know it? Uh, what's the matter? Well, today is Sapphire's and his 20th wedding anniversary, and he done clean forgot about it. Sapphire's all broke up, she crying, and everything else. Oh, well, believe me, Amos, the kingfish got a good excuse for having to slip his mind today. Oh, no, he ain't neither. Now, tell you what. Me and Sapphire done figured out a way to kind of jog his memory and remind him of the way he used to feel about her. And we done it, you see, but he didn't pay no attention to it. Didn't I? Well, I'll tell you what, you see, I put five old love letters that he wrote to her 20 years ago in that old desk that he bought for the office. Yeah, well, the big news that I'm going to... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Amos, uh, did I hear you say something about putting five letters in the Kingfisher's desk? Yeah, that's right, Andy, yeah. But it didn't do no good. Uh, tell me, Andy, what was the big news that you was going to tell me? It just got smaller. <laughs> oh, me. Why don't nothing ever work out right? It seemed like my castles always come crumbling down. Amos, would you mind leaving me alone? I got some heavy figuring to do. Oh, sure, Andy. Uh, what is you got to figure out? How I is going to get $12 back. Uh, but, Professor Pepperdine, uh, I can't understand it. Uh, is you sure these letters wasn't written by George Washington? Not only that, but the original contents of these letters weren't written more than 20 years ago. No. My advice to you, Stevens, is not to even attempt to sell them as George Washington letters, or you'll end up in jail. Yeah, well, I sure like to get my hands on the big bum that writ these letters in the first place. <laughs> well, thanks anyway, Professor. So long. Goodbye. Well, there's only one thing to do. I got to get a hold of Andy and sell him my half of the partnership for another twelve dollars. <laughs> Andy and the Kingfish seem to have similar thoughts involving a sum of twelve dollars. We'll learn who comes out ahead in just a moment. Intermission time on the Amos and Andy show, and that means our intermission orchestra, directed by Raymond Scott with Dorothy Collins to sing.
to start an on a family tree. Imagine starting on a family tree. The papa is you and the mama is me. If your heart goes off of their bum, it's love, love, love. If your throat comes up with a lump, it's love, love, love. If your knees go a knock it in it's love, love, love. If your cuckoo like the cuckoo in the clock, it's love, love. Now, back to Amos and Andy. Well, now that Professor Pepperdine has convinced the kingfish that the letters he had were not written by George Washington, and now that Andy knows they actually are the kingfish's old love letters, both partners are looking for each other in the hope of disposing of his interest in the partnership without tipping off the other. As we join them now, they're getting down to business in the Kingfish's office. Uh, Andy, I'm uh, glad you dropped in because uh, I'm just sitting here saying to myself, Andy Brown is the best friend I've got and I certainly love him. Yeah, well, I just come over here to tell you that I was crazy about you, too. <laughs> now, look, Andy, I want to tell you about my love first and I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't interrupt me. All right, sorry, sorry. Uh, anyway, I keep saying to myself, Andy Brown is always doing things for me, lends me money when I wants it, comforts me in my hour of needs. Uh, is that me? Uh, sure is you, yeah. And then I find that I ask myself this question. I say, George Stevens, when is you going to do something for Andy? When is you going to pay back that great friendship of this noble, generous, wonderful man? Uh, is that still me? That's still you, yeah. <laughs> And the answer come back to me, Andy. Uh, here I got these George Washington letters. Uh, why don't I give them to Andy? I say to myself. Mm. Yeah, let him make the $10,000. Cool, course, Andy, just so I don't embarrass you too much by doing such a great favor for you, I'll let you pay me a measly $12 for my half interest. Yeah. Uh, tell me this, Kingfish. Is you all through with the love stuff now? Uh, yeah, I think I done covered everything there. Yeah, because I come over to tell you about how crazy I is about you. Me? Yeah. Mm. Tell you the truth, I was willing to sell you back my half of the letters for $12 and let you keep the $10,000. Uh, sorry, and I love you too much. <laughs> Not as much as I does you. Uh, much more, much more. Brother Ander, the love I got for you is greater than all the famous loves in history. Romeo and Juliet, Anthony and Cleopatra, Barnum and Bailey, and all them great people. <laughs> I tell you, I got them all beat, Andy. Yeah, well, the only thing is, I... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, hello, gentlemen. Uh, what you want, Lightning? Uh, I give the furniture man the two dollars you give me, King Feast, and I come to give you the receipt. Yeah, the receipt, huh? Oh, okay, give it to me. What's the matter, Lightning? You look like you're dreaming. Yeah, but I, I know I had that receipt someplace. I just don't remember where I put it. Lightning, you don't ever remember nothing. Yeah, you ought to do something about that memory of yours, Lightning. Sure. I is, Kingfish. Like I told you, I already done made plans. Starting tonight, I go into night school to take a memory course. A memory course in night school, huh? Well, that's a good idea for you. You need it. You're going to start that at night, huh? I yeah, sir. If I don't forget. <laughs> well, I guess I got to be going now. Yeah, well, so long, Lightning. Oh, uh, so long, Lightning. Now, look, Kingfish, about that $12. Mm hmm. I, uh, hold it. Uh, who is this coming in now? Oh, it looked like Mr. Miller, the man that done sold me to death. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, hello, Stevens. I'm uh, glad I found you in. Yeah, uh, you got the $2 I sent you for the desk, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. But uh, I want to speak to you about that desk. Uh, uh, what about it? Yeah, well, uh, you see, there were some other people looking at the desk before you bought it. 
And when they found out that it was gone, uh, being collectors of antiques and all that, they were uh, very much upset. So I offered to come over and see if you wouldn't feel like selling it uh, for a small profit. Oh, well, I might be interested. Uh, how much you give me for it? Well, uh... That ain't enough. <laughs> yeah, double whatever you was thinking and we'll take it. I'll make it $50. That's better. It's a deal. That first figure was way too low. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, boys. Uh, here, here's your money, and I'll send my truck over to pick up the desk. Uh, okay, Mr. Miller, thank you. Yes, sir. so long, boys. Uh, so, so long. long. Yeah, goodbye. Oh, boy, that fella sure wanted that desk bad, didn't he? Yeah. Andy, look here. Here's the money. Here. Here's $25 for you, and never say that I wasn't a good partner to you. Oh, that's great. Thanks a lot, Kingfish. And another thing I was thinking of here, mm -hmm. let's, let's forget about them George Washington letters. Maybe they'd write to try and sell them. Yeah. I know I don't want nobody going around trying to sell my letters after I was gone. Yeah, well, I agree with you, Andy. Now, let's forget about them. Uh, anyway, I got uh, another deal that I can go into right now, and I got $25 capital to go into deal with. I go and check on the thing right now. I'll see you later. <laughs> Hello, Shorty. How is you? Oh, how is you, Kingfish? Uh, give me a shave, will you, Shorty? Uh, I gotta go out on a big deal. Okay. You, you know something? I was looking for you today. Yeah, I wanted to congratulate you and, and, and Seth on, on, on your 20, 20th wedding anniversary. Yeah, well, you see, uh, 20th wedding anniversary today? That's right. Oh, me, I done clean forgot about it, Shorty. Yeah, well, congratulations anyway, Kingfish. I, I want to I tell you, you how happy you must be. Uh, married life must be, must be one of the fun, uh, must be wonderful being married to all, all that. Uh, marriage must be a beautiful, beautiful, uh, how do you stand it? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I just think in here, Shorty, mm -hmm. Sapphire must be crying her eyes out, because I didn't say nothing about it this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I better take her a nice present when I go home tonight for our 20th anniversary. Uh, you, you better if you expect to have a 21st. <laughs> yeah, well, now, uh, uh, oh, me, here goes my $25 and the big deal. Mm -hmm. I wonder what I can get her for a present. Oh, uh, that fur store down the street uh, got a muskrat fur coat in the window for $25. Yeah, I, I see that. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, hmm? Maybe I might get a better idea. Uh, let me see. The 50th anniversary is gold. The 25th is silver. The 15th is crystal. I wonder what the 20th is. Uh, well, I know it ain't muskrat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I, I think I'll get her that coat anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, I know she's been looking at it. Yeah, I, I was looking at it, too. It, it's nice, Kingfish, but... Are you sure it's brand new? Oh, of course it's brand new, Shorty. Uh, ain't no person ever wore it before. Uh, well, then all I got to say is uh, that muskrat must have led a hard life. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Don't talk silly, Shorty. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the next thing I got to do is to write Sapphire a sweet loving note that I can put in with the coat. Uh, mm -hmm. You got any ideas on what I can write her, Shorty? Oh, why, sure. Uh, just say... Uh, uh, to the prettiest girl in the world, uh, no, uh, to the most gorgeous, uh, uh, to, to the lovely, uh, uh, to the shapely, uh, I'd like to meet her. <laughs> yeah, now, 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 wait a minute. Mm? I, 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 I know exactly what to do. I was going to copy one of the love letters I done found in the desk. Mm. Put that in the fur coat and bring it right home to Sapphire. Mm. Here, listen to this letter here. Here's what, yeah, listen. Mm. To the most wonderful woman that ever drew the breath of life, I love you. How did that sound? Oh, no, no that's, that's not, that's, that, 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 that's too, sh that's too, sh it, it don't express the real thing. Uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't got enough se uh, sentiment. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Sapphire, honey, you is just the prettiest woman I done ever seen in that new fur coat. Oh, George, I've wanted a fur coat like this for ten years. But that ain't what means the most to me. Mm -hmm. When you come down to breakfast this morning, darling, you looked at me as if, well, as if this day was no different to no other day. Ha, ha, ha. 
You can laugh now, but honest, I could have cried, George. Then after you left, I did cry. But now, sweetheart, now I know that you didn't forget. Honey, if you will just reach in the pocket of the fur coat there, you will see just how much you means to me. The pocket? Why, George, it's a no to yeah. the most wonderful woman who ever drew the breath of life. I love you. Oh, George, this note means more to me than anything. Yeah, I thought you'd like it, honey. Uh, that's why when... Uh, I was, well, I was overcome with the original idea a while ago. The, the note, you know, just come to me a little while ago. I just couldn't wait to sit down and write it. Wait a minute, George. You didn't just write that note. Uh, I didn't? No, no. That was written many years ago by a much younger man than you. Um, it was? Yes. And I'm in love with the man that first wrote the note. You, you what? That's a fine thing to tell me on our anniversary. Now, how long has this been going on, and who is the big bum? That's what I want to know. <laughs> now, wait a minute, sir. Well, George, I've been in love with that man for 20 years. 20 years? Right from the kickoff, huh? <laughs> Does you mean to tell me that our whole married life has been nothing but an infernal triangle? Oh, darling, don't be silly. What's happened to your memory? My memory? Why, that's the first letter you ever wrote to me, the first love letter when you was courting me 20 years ago. Oh, uh, I uh, wrote that letter? Why, yes, dear. I had Amos put it and a few of, of the others in, which your, de in your desk drawer today. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's my hat? George, where are you going? I'm going to night school with lightning. <laughs> Amos and Andy will be back with you again next week. And now to close our program, here's Raymond Scott and the orchestra. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.